the uh, Northeastern Ohio region, not necessarily all the time down at Oak Hill Collaborative, but uh, they are one of our sponsors and we're glad to uh, have a home there when we need to use the conference room facility. Ohio women in computing down in Columbus. Oh, okay, so good, good. Um, Ohio women in computing down in Columbus. So we're not alone. Uh, this forum has uh, an impact on the way that uh, we can educate the public, uh, discuss these recurring themes, and uh, sort of suss out the issues that uh, are so important, so vitally, uh, vitally important to our society and to the economy, as we have seen uh, from some recent events. I'm sure you're all aware of uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, negotiation with carrier and to save the jobs in the carrier plant which later we have found out oh please come in uh, we later found out that that production line uh, that was under discussion had later just been automated and those folks lost their jobs anyway and uh, the promise of having automated labor uh, was supposed to fulfill this dream you know, the George Jetsons, uh, 1950s, Rosie the Robot, they do your housework and you can live a life of leisure. And we're finding increasingly that uh, uh, free market capitalism has different ideas for us. Uh, I just want to kind of talk about a theme really, really quickly. Uh, my first few years of, of uh, higher education, I was in English literature. And uh, it, it's kind of funny how it seems like this theme is a perennial theme, and we keep talking about it and talking about it, no answers are really arrived at. Uh, if you go back to the Greeks, you have Prometheus giving humanity fire, and uh, then being punished severely, if we remember the myth, he's, he's, uh, he has his liver plucked out by vultures daily, and then it comes back. Uh, so, how dare you? And so that's sort of a parable about technology in general. Uh, Icarus flies too close to the sun. You know, how wonderful to invent flight and then, you know, in your joy, uh, just be like, well, that didn't quite work out. Uh, we have uh, Mary Shelley uh, writing about uh, unlocking the secrets of life and death and uh, you know, all this guy wanted to do was just solve a problem for humanity. And his creation had different ideas. So we're, uh, we're warned by these things. Then a, a gentleman, uh, Carol uh, Chapek in uh, Czechoslovakia writes a play in 1920, Rossum's Universal Robots. And uh, you know, at first the robots are really happy to work for humanity. And everybody's getting along, it's sort of a utopian society. And then, of course, you know, the inevitable revolt. There was a uh, young special effects engineer in the 80s made a, uh, made a terrible made-for-TV movie uh, film, Battle Beyond the Stars, and like Star Wars was the big thing. And uh, this gentleman went on to make a film in the 80s. Uh, that person was James Cameron. And we have all seen the film, probably. Uh, broke all box office records, uh, especially the sequel Terminator 2, right? And uh, so this warning just keeps coming up, like, hey, you're going to create these things and you're not going to see the long-term consequences. And as our economy is changing, we're starting to discuss things like universal basic income, which they have been discussing in Europe for some time now. And it seems controversial, but really, I mean, that's the direction we all have to go. That's the trouble we face. If you automate all of the jobs, uh, what's left? How do we participate in a capitalist economy? Uh, Andrew Yang has not been doing a great job. I ask people, like, do you understand Yang's platform? A thousand dollars for everyone. A lot of people think it's like a scratch off lotto ticket. Here's your thousand dollars, okay. <laughs> Problem solved, right? We all know that that's not uh, a viable option. Uh, what he's talking about is a is a stipend that the government, through taxation of industry, would give to every household, uh, man, woman, and child, a thousand dollars, 
and uh, that is to combat these market forces of automation. We see the robots and automation in the Amazon warehouses, where, hey, you know, the working conditions in the job uh, itself are not that great. Uh, they have ambulances parked outside. I have to remind everyone that Jeff Bezos is the most wealthy individual, um, and that improving those working conditions wouldn't really affect the bottom line in any significant way. They just choose to not do it. Uh, eventually, I feel like all of those jobs will be automated, uh, seeing the progress, the rapid progress that they have made, uh, that's the way for the future. So if everyone is at home clicking the prime buy now and uh, no one has any jobs left, how, how do we pay for these things? So it's imperative that we get our head around uh, what the implications are for society as a whole, our economy, uh, our participation in that economy and our entire way of life. So um, we uh, we have some panelists today, and our first speaker is um, Sundar Veerantham, and he uh, is the director of software development in the uh, data center group of Intel in Allentown, Pennsylvania. He's a lifetime member of the ACM. He's involved in the promotion of the organization. Uh, inside and outside the company, uh, everyone knows Intel uh, by the by the chime, you know. And uh, his skill set and experience cover a wide range of telecommunication related domains. His team is currently involved in delivering highly optimized firmware layers that run on uh, system on chip devices that power mobile networks. Internet of Things is a huge, huge thing, and I don't know if anyone's played with the Raspberry Pi lately. Those are the kind of devices that we're talking about. His research interests include uh, network traffic and congestion management, high-speed networking, security, theoretical computer models. And uh, these are all areas in which he holds patents and has published papers, book chapters, and articles. He received his PhD in computer science in 1997 from Louisiana State University. And currently he's part of the ACM Distinguished Speaker Program where he lectures about societal, business, and ethical implications of these technologies in use today and in the future. So without further ado, I'm sure we're totally sick of me talking about uh, historical fables.